Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to install the Thermaltake Contact Silent 12 onto an AMD motherboard. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we're going to take a look at the Thermaltake Contact Silent 12, which is a 120mm tower cooler. We're going to be installing this onto the MSI, the B450 Gaming Plus motherboard, and we're going to be using the AMD Ryzen 5 2600. Now, this cooler can take processors a lot higher than the 2600, but this is what I had to hand, and it goes well with the B450 board, and I am actually planning to build with this setup, actually, in a case that we've reviewed. So, I thought I'd go through the process of installing the cooler onto the CPU, because it's not always as straightforward as what it may seem in the instruction manual. So first of all, let's get the motherboard prepped. Okay, so we've got our motherboard out of the box. Now, ideally you want to put this onto an anti-static surface. You can use the motherboard copper box if you wish to. Um, I'm just using the tabletop. It is a relatively anti-static surface. And also it allows me to get a little bit of pressure on the components when we need to install the, the cooler, which we'll come onto in a little bit. But first of all, we need to put our CPU actually on the motherboard. So all we need to do is to get the retention lever, pull it slightly across and then gently upwards and this opens up the socket to allow the processor to be installed. Now the processor has pins on it and the socket is ready to accept those pins. So on the actual CPU itself, on the Ryzen CPUs, if you look into the corner, there's a little gold triangle and also there's writing on the CPU. Now generally the writing on the CPU will be facing the same way as the writing on the socket. So if you can read it saying socket AM4 on the socket and you can read it saying Ryzen processor, is around the right way. Also, on most motherboards, you'll find there's an actual marking in the corner, which will say CPU or corner or here, something along those lines. Basically, as long as the writing is the right, same way as the CPU, you should find the CPU just falls into the socket, no problems whatsoever. It is a ZIF socket, which stands for zero insertion force, so you shouldn't find any resistance at all when putting the CPU in. If you do find any resistance, stop, check the pins, and make sure that the arm is fully in the upright position. But once you're happy that's in, I always put a little bit of finger pressure on the top of the CPU just to hold it in place, and then gently lower the arm and clip it into place. That's it, that's our CPU installed. So now we can get ready to install the cooler. Okay, so we've got all our components out and ready from the cooler. So we've got the tower cooler itself. We've got the Intel ring, which we don't need for this particular installation. So we can stick that back in the box. We've got our accessories bag which has got the reduction uh, PWM so you can use that if you want to if you want to get 25% less noise and uh, rotational speeds out of the fan then you can use that this just goes as an inline on the fan but we're not going to use that so we can put that back in the box but what we are going to need is two of the springs which are used for attaching the fan onto the cooler and also in here we've got a sachet of thermal paste. Now I'm not actually going to use that thermal paste, so I'm going to be using my own, but the principle is going to be pretty much exactly the same. So we've got all the things we need. There is actually in the box a uh, pretty decent tutorial or graphical tutorial on how to install this cooler. Um, again, it's not always entirely obvious how things proceed from one step to another. It does give you a really good idea, but I'm going to go through it in detail just so you know exactly how to do it. So the first thing we need to do is to attach the fan to the cooler. Now this is normally quite an odd thing to do first of all. Generally this is the thing we do at the very end. But with this particular cooler setup, you do actually put the fan onto the cooler first of all. Now one thing of note, when you're actually installing the cooler, you'd want the retention clasp on this side, the one with the thumb uh, pressure mounting on it, whatever you want to call it. This should be towards the bottom of your motherboard. So if you consider this to be the top end of the motherboard, where your VRMs are, you want this little section to be a little bit lower down. Now there's no reason for this other than it makes installation a lot easier. When you've got the cooler this orientation, you have to put thumb pressure on this side, which is actually really close to where the VRMs are. So it doesn't give you a great deal of room to actually get pressure fully onto it. So my suggestion is make sure that the thumb pressure or the kind of the, the clamp is on the lower side of your motherboard or towards your graphics card. So with that in mind, we're now gonna mount the CPU fan. So put the cooler down onto a flat surface and with your cooling fan, making sure that you've got the thermal tape badge on this side facing towards the cooler and with your wire at the bottom 
actually coming out of the bottom. You don't want it to be coming out on the sides. Uh, the top is okay, not ideal, uh, but the sides, it's gonna get in the way of the spring. So try and make sure that is actually at the bottom. So with the cooler roughly lined up, grab your two springs. The springs are the same, so it doesn't matter which one you use, left or right. And all you want to do is where the two hooks are, put the hooks through the fan, the little holes where you'd normally put a screw mount in, and just gently rest them in place. And make sure that the fan is lined up where you want it, actually on the cooler. Now I would suggest if you look through the actual blades and look where you can see the fins of the cooler behind it, just make sure there's an equal gap, top and bottom, and make sure it's all lined up exactly how you need it to be. Now obviously if you've got larger sticks of RAM, which are coming up, you may need to move the fan higher, but you can't do that if you feel you need to. It's entirely up to you. But what I would do at this point is apply a very small amount of pressure just to hold the fan in place, and with the spring on the side, a little bit of thumb pressure, and just gently push it into place. On the other side, do the same thing again. Look, very little bit of thumb pressure, just hold it slightly in place and you should feel it click into place. So there we go, that was it. That was how to attach the fan to the cooler. And if you give it just a visual inspection, just make sure it's all lined up. You, you may find that it's actually slightly skew one side or other, but because this is a spring and it's even tension on each side, if you just give it a little wiggle, it should wiggle back into place wherever you need it. So I've set mine up so there is about a three mil gap between the last fin of the cooler and the top of the fan and the same on the bottom. So that should give us nice equal airflow. Again, if you want to, you can mount the fan higher up to uh, avoid hitting any RAM. So that's the fan installed on the cooler. So now what we need to do is to apply some thermal paste and actually put the cooler onto the board. Also, before you go any further, make sure if you've still got the uh, protective layer on the bottom of your cooler, make sure you take this off uh, stick it on the box or whatever, but do make sure you take it off. If you leave this on, potentially you could damage both your processor and possibly the cooler, more so the processor, or you may actually find that this heats up and the plastic gets stuck on your processor. It's not a good look, so make sure you peel this off and put it somewhere safe. Okay, so now we're ready to put a thermal compound onto our CPU. Now in this particular instance, I'm gonna be using some thermal grease, which is HY510. Um, it's not a particularly great compound, but it'll do for this job. Um, I am planning on taking this apart again after, so this is going to be nice and easy to uh, clean off, unlike some of the uh, more metal-based ones. So all you need to do is uh, a little bit of a glob on the center of the CPU. Now there's various ways of doing this. Uh, ultimately, do whichever one suits you. So I'm just going to put a little glob onto the uh, middle of the CPU. That should be uh, more than enough. So what we need to do now is to actually install the cooler. Okay, so now we've got our cooler. So first of all, the easiest way to do this in my opinion, this bit here on the cooler, the kind of uh, the non-spring tension section, this is the easiest bit to get started. So this bit is gonna go behind the clip on here. Now I forgot to mention actually earlier on in the video, that this just uses the standard AM4 mountings that come pre-installed on the motherboard, which is part of the reason why this cooler is actually very easy to use because you don't have to take anything apart, you just have to put things on. So it's a really good one to actually get used to installing components with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up this section here with that section there, and then we're gonna apply pressure after. So the first thing to do is to get this section here to mount around to the CPU area. Now I didn't mention already, with the AM4 mountings, you use the standard brackets which are installed on the motherboard from the factory. So you can leave those in place which makes life a little bit easier. You don't have to remove back plates or those kinds of things. Also, uh, in future use, when you actually remove it, then you don't have to worry about the actual back plate falling off in the back of the PC tray. Anyway, that's a, another story. So this section here is the easiest one to get started. And you wanna lip that over, and you wanna lift that over and get it to connect onto the actual piece of plastic so it latches over nicely. And when it's done that, what you can do then is then gently rotate the CPU cooler. And then on the opposite side, with the thumb clamp, just a little bit of pressure. I'll try and give you a better picture of that. So a little bit of pressure and
and then you should find it clips into place. Now you can actually put a little bit more pressure on it after, just to make sure it's firmly attached. There, I did put a bit more pressure and it did move a little bit. Also what you can do is, if, if you wanted to, if you're finding it difficult to put enough pressure onto this thumb section, you can actually take the fan off and actually use the, uh, the mounting areas here and just push down on those, just to give you a little bit more pressure area on here, uh, whichever way you want to do. You can push down there, it doesn't uh, cause any damage. And also you may find if you're slightly less dexterous, you might find actually pushing down on those side bits might be easier than pushing down on the sensor because there's a tendency for it to roll slightly. But there we go. So once that is installed, then what you can do is to spin your board round. And then if you get the PWM header from the fan and then just attach it to the PWM connection on your motherboard, which is not easy to do from this angle. And just pop that into place. And then you can tuck your wire in underneath just to keep things neat and to stop it from obstructing any of the RAM slots. Now, as you can probably see from this angle, the fan here is not going to uh, interfere with the RAM slots at all. So you can actually use quite high profile RAM. Obviously you don't want it too high, otherwise you'll start blocking some of the airflow into the fan blades. But essentially that is pretty much it. So there we go, there is the finished project. So the fan has been mounted to the cooler, the cooler has been mounted to the CPU, and the CPU is mounted to the motherboard. So we're pretty much ready to get going on the rest of the build. But this was a little tutorial on how to actually get that spring mechanism to work properly. I know some people do uh, sort of worry a little bit about how much pressure you do need to put on there, but really you don't need to worry about it. They have designed this really well, and it does fit exceptionally well. And at least with the spring clip, you do realize that the uh, CPU has got really good tension across the entire flat surface, so you should get fantastic cooling. Now, if you want to see the results of the cooling in this and also the build that we're doing in this, click on the subscribe button, click on the chime icon, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But there we go, that has been how to install the Thermaltake Contact Silent 12 on an AMD based motherboard. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.